Hello and welcome to the Ace Podcast. As per usual, folks, ensure that you like this video in advance. Of course, you know it's going to be good. Um, hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications if you haven't done so already, team. Uh, without any further ado, let's dive straight into uh, this podcast's questions. And the first question we have on this episode is, um, how do I get over a setback? Okay, so quite a, quite a, a general question here, because we all know that setbacks, it's all down to how we perceive things, right? So a setback is a setback if we perceive it to be a setback. So whenever you think of a problem, you need to think, Sometimes, you know, you might go one step back in order to go two steps forward, for instance. So with every setback, there becomes space for growth. So that's my mindset anyways. Whenever, and this could be the most difficult and challenging situations in life, whenever there is an obstacle, there is always some kind of light, yeah? Wherever there is light, there is a shadow and vice versa. So that's the way, firstly, it comes down to your conditioning, your beliefs, and your spirituality, because, you know, these kind of, spiritual practices and and this kind of spiritual mindset will enable you to grow um, even in the face of perceived setbacks as you put it so how can you get over a setback well really I'm, I'll, I'll talk about some NLP based strategies a setback is the way you perceive it the way you visualize it in the sensory input so if you, you you lost a job, for example, or if you have gained weight or you got injured and you haven't been exercising for a substantial period of time, these are what some examples of how people consider you know setbacks. So how can you get over these? Well, change what it means to you. Change the vocabulary you use with yourself. If you're calling it a setback, if you're calling it a problem or challenge, if you're using verbs like I'm going to try and make a difference or you know it's just too hard, well, these are limiting beliefs and these are barriers. You... You become or you move toward what you project. And this is the way we all live our lives. If you're telling yourself it's tough, if you're telling yourself you can't do it in advance, then you're not going to. And these are limiting beliefs. That, so that's essentially what you're getting to here. It's not the outcome itself that's the problem. It's not the losing the job that's the problem. It's not the gaining the weight that's the problem and so on and so forth. Or the breakup down in a relationship. It's, it's not. These aren't the problems. The problems are your perceptions of these problems because there can be growth in any of these situations you know becoming uh, in acquiring an injury during a workout for example is you know it's not ideal don't get me wrong but it's a chance for you to reflect and to look at your nutrition to look at your supplementation to 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 reflect upon your habits and how you got injured and these sorts of things it could it have been something that you could have changed or and so on and so forth so a setback is a chance to reflect and to grow you know, world wars throughout history, even though they're being incredibly devastating, they've created opportunities for for movements to take place in, in other areas. Like, for example, World War Two, horrendous, disgraceful, catastrophic, whatever you want to call it. It was horrible, but it created space for growth. You know, you know uh, uh, the, the women's movement, for example, really took over. You know, women were really stereotyped and pigeonholed during these times, especially. And because so many men were killed for throughout these economies, and that you know this really hampered and inhibited a lot of businesses, women had to step up and do different things, and and, and their qualities started to be shown and appreciated more. So what the whole point of saying using this is to, is this analogy is to show that where there is a problem, there is a chance for growth. Where there is space, there is there is room for something to rise. And um. And that's what you have here. It's down to you and it's down to the vocabulary you use with yourself. Because when it comes to limiting beliefs, listen, it's, it's all right. Say if I've never done ballet before, right? It's okay if I were to say, I'm not good at ballet right now. There's nothing inherently wrong with that. That is the truth. You know, who knows? Maybe if I, I gave it a go, I could do a good job. But hey, but chances are because I haven't developed the skills, because they aren't habitual, because I haven't practiced it and, and tweaked the nuances and refined the movements and so on and so forth and improved my balance and all these sorts of things, you know, I won't be a professional anytime soon. The problem is when you say to yourself, I will never be a ballet dancer, if that's what I wanted to do. That's the problem because you are now not only inhibiting yourself in the present moment, you are inhibiting yourself in the future. And, and that is quite devastating. So what I'm getting at here is, is I want you to understand that it's, it's how you project the setback to yourself. It's what it means to you. So 
you can also get over a setback by having a clear vision visualization visualization is key here you need to mentally rehearse yourself overcoming this setback that means taking away the color the energy the vibrancy the the the, the quality of sound when you visualize yourself having accrued this setback you know when you were told you know we're gonna have to lay you off or you or you're fired or or where you got the injury instead of reliving these moments every day reminding yourself why you are stuck why you can't progress you need to visualize and i help people do this through my meditation so you know if you want to let me know what kind of meditations guided meditations you want me to teach in future yeah, just drop it in the comments guys i'm more than happy to in include it in my future meditation sessions if you're f familiar with my meditations, you know how important it is for you to visualize success, to visualize yourself behaving, developing skills, achieving the sort of things that you want to achieve. So one of the, how do you get over a setback? Firstly, take away, dissociate from the way you perceive the setback. Stop visualizing in, in vivid color, bright color. Don't zoom in. Don't make it panoramic, taking up your entire field of vision when you imagine yourself, uh, you know, incurring this setback don't make the the noises or the dialogue included in this setback loud you know you might want to reverse it you might want to make it small so it's you know goes to the bottom left it's, it shrinks into the distance and it's replaced by uh, something more more positive more empowering so it's down to you to choose because life is a choice right it's down to you to choose where you want to move forward in your life and what these setbacks mean to you when i incur a setback I see it as a chance to grow, a chance to learn more about myself, a chance for me to reflect and say, is the juice worth the squeeze, essentially? Is the setback worth overcoming? Or even if I overcame the setback, is it going to bring me the kind of joy, inner peace, happiness, gratitude, love, connection, and so on and so forth that I, I seek? Because we don't seek things, we seek feelings. That's in everything. When you buy something, you're not buying clothes f because you like the clothes. Yeah, you might like it, don't get me wrong. But we buy clothes because it, it, it fulfills an, an emotion. It fulfills an, a, that we a need in our eyes. How can you get over a setback? It needs to become a must. It can't be a should for you anymore. You can't just look at a setback and go, you know, I should lose this weight that I've gained. I should get a new job. I should... Uh, develop that hobby that I've been putting off for years, if not decades. You know, I should do this. I should. No, you. It, it needs to become a must. You. It must become a priority. And things become a priority to us when we uh, essentially reflect upon our long-term goals. What's a priority in our lives? For me personally, there are always three key priorities in my life. And if I'm doing something that's going to support any one of them, then I know. It's, it's worth my psychic, my mental, my emotional energy investing in it. It's worth my focus, my time, my dedication to achieving these things. Yeah, and for me, it's health, um, relationships, and wealth. And for me personally, I believe those three are strongly correlated. If you're looking after your wealth, uh, you are essentially giving yourself more resources to utilize as it relates to your health. You can spend more on any particular equipment, resources, supplementation, healthy treats, organic foods, blah, 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 blah. A lot of people have a different perspective. They think, well, if I increase my wealth, I'm not going to have as much time on my hands and I won't exercise as much and I'll eat more junk food, more refined processed foods to, to get over the stress of the new responsibilities or ways of making money that I just developed. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's all down to your perceptions. Does improvement in one area dampen and inhibit the quality in another area or does it strengthen and consolidate it? And, and these are all down to your beliefs and your perceptions in your life from what you have experienced. So that's why I keep harping on and on about the importance of visualizing what you want to achieve in your life to keep you focused on your goal and for it to be heart led. So you can overcome a setback. Like if you're motivated, you can accomplish a great deal in your life. You can accrue all the kind of success symbols that you have in your mind. Your nice house, your nice car, your nice family, blah, 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 blah. You, the certificates, the status, the power. You can achieve all these things. But motivation alone will not bring fulfillment and happiness long term. It will provide you with short term gratification and pleasure. And that will get you quite far um, or at least make you think like you're moving quite far. Uh, but really, it's an endless wheel where you just 
build one success on top of the other and it's never enough because you can never catch what cannot be caught. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I like that saying. I've never said that before. That's a good one. I might turn that into a quote. <laughs> um, so how do you get over a setback? Become inspired. Become heart-led. Lead with your heart. Listen to your heart's wisdom. That involves removing the layers of the ego, removing the barriers, removing your over-identification with people, things, emotions, places, things, and so on and so forth. Become detached with how you see things. You are not just your physical form. You are more than that. You can transcend the physical body. You can change your energetic vibrancy, your energetic field, so much so that you begin to emit different energy and it changes people. It changes, uh, yeah, it ch literally changes the, the heart and brain coherence within other people with whom you're close with as well. This is very important stuff, guys. This is as good as it gets, life. And when you change your energy, you change what you attract, you ch uh, change what you focus on, you do new things, you try new things, you learn, you grow, you stimulate neuroplasticity and neurogenesis, you become healthier. And um, this will have a knock-on effect on all kinds of things to do with you know, how how your cells function and so on and so forth, to improving sleep quality, to, to improving how your body regulates itself, the systems within the body, and, and it can lead to longevity and better quality health. And, you know, Again, these are some of the most important things that we could ever address. So it's, it's worth paying attention to these things. So what am I essentially saying here? I'm essentially saying remove the layers of the ego, become inspired, overcome setbacks out of love and passion rather than, oh, I want to overcome this setback to prove these people that they were wrong or to show you know um, this person who left me when I was young to prove to them that I'm not a loser and all this stuff and this and that. It's not about that. Remove that layers of the ego removed your connections to emotional memories and so on and so forth you're better than that visualize where you want to go in your future and don't look back if you're too busy looking back you're, you're going to make a mistake with what's in front of you so and that's another quotation <laughs>